everyone, this is Joy. So this week I'm going to be discussing something that I never, ever, ever thought that I'd discuss in my life, and that is being open to not eating meat all the time. I am, or at least I was, an absolute carnivore. I was born in South Africa and my mom and my grandma and my auntie, like, they cooked killer steak. So, not once in my life did I ever imagine that I'd give any of those things up because that's that for me was soul food. So why am I doing this? The key thing behind this week's tip to making small changes to being a healthier self is that one of the things that I've learned is that I normally make healthier choices when I become more informed about the foods that I'm eating. Whatever we eat really does go into our bodies. So what I mean by this is that when you eat a vegetable, you're eating a vegetable, and when you eat a meat, you're eating a part of an animal. So you're essentially taking in, as well, whatever th that animal was. So for example, let's say, imagine that you're going to go to a farm, okay? And you decided that you were gonna have a beef burger. So you went to this farm and you decided, and you were gonna kill some sort of cow, chop it up into whatever bits that you wanted to and you were going to essentially cook the flesh from this cow. Now you might be thinking that I'm being quite graphic but this is really how our burgers are made and when I started to realize that what was in my fridge was some of it was created in this way I thought okay so I'm not just eating a beef burger I'm actually eating another animal's flesh okay so if you're proud carnival that might not bother you and initially i'll be honest it didn't really deter me from eating chicken or beef or you know anything like that but one of the things that did kind of raise my alarm bells was that if they say for example the animal that you end up killing and, and cooking was sick was ill with something then it's quite possible that you could contract what illness it is that they had so for example there is this E. coli bacteria which is found in cows and it's essentially in their intestines. There is a particularly dangerous strand that an increasing number of cows have and when they poo, um, it essentially spreads to other animals. So if you go to, let's say for example, a slaughterhouse and there are all these animals that are doing their stuff there and then the guy comes and kills the different cows and, you know, puts them into the factory so that they can make burgers you know, to be in our supermarket or to be in McDonald's or whatever. Um, if any of those animals, you know, come in contact with this, with one sick animal that has like a particularly dangerous strand of this bacteria, then they catch it too. Now, once they start chopping up the animals and, and, and turning it into beef burgers, when it comes to our home, those beef burgers may have the E. coli bacteria as well. So when we're eating this meal, we may not be realizing that we're actually eating meat that has E. coli. The animals evolved on, on, on consuming grass. There's some research that indicates that the high corn diet results in E. coli that are, are acid resistant. And these would be the more harmful E. coli. You feed corn to cow. And E. coli, which is a very common bug, evolves and a certain mu mutation occurs. And a strain called E. coli 0157H7 appears uh, on the world stage. And it's a product of the diet we're feeding cattle on feedlots, and it's the product of feedlot life. The animals stand ankle deep in their manure all day long, so that if one cow has it, the other cows will get it. When they get to the slaughterhouse, their hides are caked with manure. And if the slaughterhouse is slaughtering 400 animals an hour, how do you keep that manure from getting onto those carcasses? And that's how the manure gets in the meat. And now this thing that wasn't in the world, it's in the food system. A fast food nightmare may be getting worse. A two-year-old child died today in Seattle, and the killer tainted meat from jack-in-the-box hamburgers. A nationwide recall today for more than 140 tons of ground a beef. Half a million pounds of ground beef today. Nationwide recalls of ConAgra ground beef. So 
this is just like one example. Another example is mercury. When I started to eat less red meat, I then thought, okay, let me have more fish. And one of my favorite fish to have was salmon. Salmon just, oh, yummy. Just thinking about it, it's just, it's just so delicious. And then I read this clean, green, lean book. When I was reading this book, I realized that depending on how the fish is farmed, it can have really high levels of mercury. Because if I have too much fish on a regular basis, I could be increasing the levels of mercury in my body. Now, if I ever want to get pregnant, or if you ever want to get pregnant one, one day, which I, you know, fingers crossed, you know, we'll be able to do um, at some point, not now, but at some point, um, and my mercury levels are that high, it can generally affect the development of the child. So pregnant women are generally advised, you know, to watch their mercury levels. So it's little things like that that made me think, okay, I really need to be mindful of how much meat I'm eating. I need to be mindful of where the meat is coming from. How do you become more mindful about it? The key thing that I'd say is do your research. Just be curious. You don't need to spend hours researching this, but if you hear someone talking about it, ask them to tell you more. If you see something about it on the news, like look into it. Just try and be open to the information that's out there. Once you start to become more familiar with that, then it really ends up shaping the rest of the choices that you make. So yeah, that's it for me for this week. Um, I hope you like this video. Uh, if you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And yeah, that's it for me for this week. And I can't wait to see you next week. All right, lots of love. Bye. Oh, and before you go, if you want to know more information about this, then I totally recommend that you watch a do TV documentary that I've watched called Food Inc. It is so good, so informative, and just gives you an insight into the whole world of food that I knew very little about, and can also help you to be more curious about what you're eating and make choices around that. Anyways, that's it. Lots of love. Bye.